good evening one and all uh, uh good evening one and all uh, my patient is a year old uh, male uh, resident of kochi um, um he gives his uh, complaints of uh, deformity of the left axilla elbow and the hand since one year and inability to lift his uh, arm above his head or uh, um, uh, extend his uh, um, upper limb or to and inability to do daily activities with his hand left hand since one year um, is it getting shared abhinandan he is trying <laughs> oh, okay shall i wait for the thing or shall i continue uh just continue uh... Uh, yes yeah. uh history uh he had he gives history of an accidental um fire accident at his workplace a year ago where in which he sustained uh, burns to his left to the left side of his chest and the upper limb uh the the fire was immediately doused with um, uh water and um uh uh jute bags and then he was immediately taken to the local hospital where he was admitted and um, he had no other injuries at that time and no um, no uh, symptoms suggest of uh, inhalational injury at that time he was kept uh, he he underwent um, conservative management of daily dressing and um, uh during the period of admission he was admitted for a period of 2 weeks following which uh, he was dis uh, discharged there was no history of physiotherapy or splinting done during the uh, admission admission period nor any surgery done during the stay he does not give history of any splinting or physiotherapy done after the discharge also and at the time of discharge uh, he uh, gives history that he had uh, raw areas over the left side of the chest and on the arm in inner aspect of the arm and also on the hand which healed over a period of uh, two more weeks he then gives history of gradual tightening and then further uh, and then progressively a deformity of the elbow of the uh, shoulder and also of the hand uh, is there any problem sharing abhinandan abhinandan is again trying to share he was thinking that he was sharing so i just told him that He will not get to see. Ah, uh, I think now he will be able to share. Ah, uh, uh, the previous slide, please. Ah, uh, okay, no problem. Ah, uh, then um, ah, uh, uh, he does not give any history of ulceration or irritation or reddening of the scars over the uh, axilla or the elbow. over the period of uh, one year and uh, he does not give any history of any systemic uh, disease like diabetes or hypertension or others uh, he does not have any other uh, addiction such uh, and uh, no history of alcohol consumption or smoking uh, in um, uh, till now um shall i go to my uh, examination sir yeah yeah please go ahead uh, yes sir uh, um my uh, my patient uh, is uh, has uh, stable vitals and conscious oriented moderately built and nourished there is no pallor ictus sinuses or lymphadenopathy or edema and uh, local examination yeah a local examination the patient was uh, uh, examined in uh, in the standing position under uh, in a well lit room Uh, the attitude of the patient is uh, the left shoulder is in flexed internally rotated and abducted the left elbow has a fixed flexion deformity the uh, forearm is in fixed pronation the left wrist is in a, has a flexion deformity and in the left hand the all the mcp joints of the long fingers are hyper extended ip joints are all extended Uh, and the thumb uh, mcp joint is hyper extended and adducted and supinate supinated um uh, coming to the examination of the axilla as such there is uh, 
uh, a hypertrophic scar uh, across the anterior aspect of the axilla with a contracture band at the lower end which is continuous with that of the contracture band across the elbow uh, the uh, on the posterior aspect can you please shift the slide abhinandan hello abhinandan next slide can you next slide please is it there hello abhinandan uh, across the posterior aspect of the axilla there is a supple scar and there is also a sinus of variable depth but approximate size a uh, two dimensional size of 5 into 3 cm on the posterior aspect uh, can you please go to the next slide abhinandan can you hear me hello Mostly it is uh, not moving, Madhavi. Madhavi, I tell Madhavi. Ah, uh, shall I continue? Yeah, continue, uh, continue. I mean, you continue. Oh, okay, okay man. Ah, uh, coming to the extent, uh, anteriorly, ah, uh, the vertical extent is from the uh, acromion to about twenty-five centimeters above the iliac crest on the chest yeah. wall. and up to the midpoint of the arm uh, on the uh, midpoint of the arm then the horizontal extent is um, uh, up just lateral to the midline of the chest and uh, yeah this this will be enough i guess yeah yeah thank you very much uh laterally it extends from just lateral to the uh, midline uh, on the chest up to the um, Uh, over the anterior surface of the uh, arm and up to the lateral mid axial line on the arm uh, the posterior uh, aspect the extent is about 6 cm distal to the acromion vertical extent 6 cm distal to the acromion to about 25 cm above the iliac crest on the chest and up to the midpoint of the arm and uh, horizontal extent is from the lateral border of the scapula up to the medial aspect of the arm the posterior lateral surface of the arm is free and now in this uh, the uh, axillary dome is not visualized by in inspection and this scar uh, extends um, uh, even on to the lateral left mid axillary mid axial line on the abdomen the scar is hypertrophic anteriorly and variably hypopigmented and hyperpigmented Uh, posteriorly there is uh, minimal hypopigmentation but the scar is supple uh, on uh, palpation uh, there is no local rise of temperature the scar is non tender and uh, there is it's non blanching mm. would like to assess the uh, the depth of the sinus and to also assess the uh, involvement of the axillary dome uh, by palpation uh and uh, uh i will also assess the distal sensation and the vascularity both of which were intact in this patient uh coming to the range of movements i have uh, examined uh, uh, all the movements of the uh, uh, shoulder both passive and active uh, passive uh, passively uh, adduction uh, and flexion are uh, adduction uh, is uh, not restricted uh, flexion is up to 20 degrees extension is restricted external rotation is also restricted internal rotation is around 20 degrees and uh, active uh, range of movement is in the same lines um the patient also has a uh, elbow contracture a flexion contracture across the elbow as these were the only images given to me so according to the images there is a contracture uh, at least across the medial aspect of the uh, cubital fossa uh, 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 continuing from the uh, anterior axillary um, uh, contracture uh, it is hypertrophic with mixed uh, pigmentation and um, there is restriction of the extension of the left elbow and uh, next the hand hand uh, the forearm is pronated and there is a fixed flexion deformity uh, flex contra flexion contraction across the wrist and also the um, with hypertrophic and uh, hypopigmented scarring there is an extension contracture across all the mcp joints of the uh, 
fingers the ip joints are in um, neutral to extended position there is first well space uh, contract adduction contracture and uh, thumb is ha it has a z deformity um i have also examined the donor sites uh, uh, i have examined these thighs both the thighs are free uh, the back especially the scapular region has supple scar but seems to be adequate if uh, use uh, if um, uh, required for a flap uh, for to raise a flap and the arm the posterolateral aspect is free um uh so i have uh, completed the examination may i go to the provisional diagnosis or so madam uh, go ahead uh, madhavi thank you uh provisional diagnosis i would like to uh, give a, a diagnosis of great b ausho classification post burn contracture of the left axilla uh with pvc elbow and the post burn contracture of the hand uh uh the classification of which can be done with uh, detailed examination further uh, i have given grade 3 over here uh, considering that that uh, the uh, axillary dome most likely is uh, involved but however i would like to examine uh, by palpation to assess and re uh, assure the uh, or uh, to uh, give a better or correct diagnosis or classification um my uh, management um as far as this patient is concerned i would like to uh, uh, just uh, uh, work him up for anesthesia and also i would uh, uh, take an x ray of the elbow in particular because of the uh, risk of myositis ossificans in these patients and also of the hand x uh, then uh, i uh, the next uh, uh, shall i go to my management Yeah, we put you a plan now nah, so that the sir will discuss. Yes. Um. Yes. Uh, I would like to manage. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, uh the sequence would be. I would uh, first uh, do an axillary release plus an elbow release at the same sitting, followed by a release of the wrist contracture and the first web space. Uh, and followed by the release of the contractures of the hand. and all of these i will do with an interval of 3 to 4 3 to 6 months in between and at each stage i would like to assess the availability of the graft uh, uh as far as the axillary uh, uh, contracture is uh, concerned i uh, will do a incisional release um followed by uh, 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 skin grafting or flap according to the uh, Uh, the uh, involvement of the axillary dome the assessment of the true defect in this patient i had only the one side of the patient uh, um, available so i took uh, i marked my incisional release scar uh, incision marking and from there um, i measured the distance of the incisional release uh, uh, incision from bony landmark such as i had taken the uh, acromion process Uh, above below on the uh, uh, i have taken the uh, iliac crest and also the medial epicondyle and i have measured the distances uh, from uh, these bony landmarks and extrapolated them on a normal patient with a similar uh, stature and uh, uh, come to the uh, uh, true defect uh, next uh, the release uh, will proceed in this way uh, uh, first uh, as in this particular slide you can see in the upper lateral uh, the upper lateral picture i have drawn uh, the release in two uh, different colors posterior uh, release uh, will be along the um, uh, these lines and also along the uh, walls of the sinuses so as to uh, uh, give a proper uh, assessment of the dome Uh, once i have achieved uh, once i have released i will also make multiple darting incisions in order to achieve uh, full uh, uh, contracture release all around in a three dimensional uh, manner and uh, if the dome is not involved 
i will go ahead with uh, uh, grafting of the uh, residual raw areas with medium thickness skin graft harvested from the thighs but if the dome is involved then i'll have to i would uh, i will uh, go ahead with a parascapular flap trans, uh, transposition flap from uh, onto the dome and the residual areas will be covered with medium thickness skin graft uh i have drawn a plan um uh, can you share it uh, again uh, uh, sir in the in the same setting i will also do an incisional release and um, incisional release of the head um, and uh, the I don't know the status of the cub cubital fossa from this because if the cubital fossa is not in court, then I will go ahead with the medium thickness skin grafting of the rest of the area. If, however, the cubital fossa is also in court, then I will um, give a local flap. Uh, uh, one could be a uh, subcutaneous vertical based propeller flap uh, of the uh, cubital uh, fossa. Second thing, a uh, second step be a fat arm step. Ah, yeah. Uh, can I take control of this uh, thing? I'll, I'll, uh, I can control it and do the navigate. Thank you. Uh, so I, I'll just show you the uh, uh, my release, incisional release. Uh, in this, uh, as you can see with the upper uh, lateral uh, uh, square uh, photo, I will release uh, on the posterior aspect. I will release the um, uh, the contracture along the sinus sinus walls and anteriorly as shown and. Um, then, uh, 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 if the axillary dome is uninvolved, then go ahead with the grafting of the raw area. However, if, it, uh, if the dome is involved, then I will uh, do a parascapular flap cover followed by skin grafting of the residual raw areas. And uh, for the uh, elbow, I will do a, a skin grafting if the cubicle is not involved. But if it is involved, then I would like to do a propeller flap uh, of the uh, Fossa itself, or I'll take a lateral arm slap for the cover. Post operatively, uh, I will give an aeroplane skin for the axilla, um, uh, wherein the, uh, the arm is abducted to around 100 110 degrees and the skin is applied, and elbow can be kept in extension uh, and uh, this spring will be continued for at least six months. So three months of uh, continuous 24 hours of splinting and next three months of night splinting. I will also uh, recommend uh, pressure garments and uh, massage of the residual scar since it is an incisional release. So that they align in the uh, direction of the uh, um, uh, massage. And uh, that, that's it. Sir. Uh, Krishna Murthy, sir. sir. Krishna Murthy, sir. I have muted, yeah. please. I'm, yes, I'm sir. On. Uh, okay. okay, I'm on. Sir, uh, she has completed uh, her uh, plan. Uh, would you like to ask her questions, sir? I'm a teacher, but I'm not I've been an examiner, but she should put up with my examinership. OK, uh, what should be the sequence? I agree with you that uh, uh, the contracture will have to be released in the uh, axilla first. Which will you do first, anterior side or posterior side? What should be the position of the patient on the table? Uh, sir, uh, uh, I will uh, first do an anterior uh, axillary release, okay. followed by the posterior. Okay. 
um i'll keep the patient in now uh, on the other words what i am asking you is will it be possible to release the anterior axillary contracture uh, separately and then posterior axillary contracture separately that's why i asked what should be the position of the patient on the table um Uh, we can keep the patient in supine position, sir. Starting from the anterior axillary contracture release, you will gain access to the posterior uh, contracture also. So we can go that way, anterior to posterior, and uh, uh, and uh, release it with the patient in supine only. Uh, the problem here is this particular patient. The wound has healed by secondary intention. That is how he had developed the contracture. The axilla has got supple amount. There is a huge amount of skin is always available in the axilla. It doesn't get burned. It was a raw area. Possibility that this man was epileptic and fallen on fire and got on only one half of the body burnt. So it has been deep burns. It has been treated badly. The axillary skin will be always available for you to supplement. In on the table, you'll have to consider certain things that the patient will have to be on the side. For you to release anterior as well as posterior axilla, uh, anterior uh, contracture as well as the posterior contracture, so that you will be able to achieve good result simultaneously. It will not be possible for you to treat the anterior fold first and then the posterior fold. That means patient will be on the side. Then where will you take the graft? So this should become a part and parcel of your plan. You can release the anterior axillary. Contracture as well as posterior, and then take the patient super a uh, normal position on the table supine, and then take the graft, and then again you have to put the patient in another position, and it becomes quite difficult for the anesthetist to deal with. So this particular step we should have thought about. It is not possible for you to release one side. You have to release both so that the shoulder gets completely free. If you are not going to do the shoulder first, you will not be able to release the elbow. You are not going to do the elbow. You will not be able to reach the wrist. Wrist needs a flap. Wrist needs some uh, after the wrist release. You will have to release a first web and then MP joint. That hand probably will getting a function. It will be very difficult. So axillary contracture takes a precedence. If there is a neck contracture that gets a precedence, unless otherwise the neck is supple and useful, you will not be able to anesthetize the patient. Yes, sir. Hello. Go ahead. Sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sir, she has finished. So, uh, do you think uh, one more uh, doubt for you? So, this yes. type of uh, uh, contractures, when we release uh, the contracture, usually uh, it is difficult to uh, get the even uh, uh, 90 or 100 degree of uh, the abduction. Uh, the underlying uh, muscle uh, tightening and uh, the uh, contracture also. So, how will you address it, sir? The splint will have to have. Uh, actually, there are a lot of articles which have come even in our Indian journal where adjustable splint with the ratchet. So, with the ratchet, you will be able to stretch and continue continuously the aeroplane splint, the uh, portion which is in between the chest and the arm. There you can put a ratchet and the ratchet you can keep on adjusting so that the contracted muscles also stretch. Over a period of time, the contracture becomes much uh, relieved after the design of the aeroplane splint. A fixed aeroplane splint will not give you this advantage. So uh, better to stop there and uh, resurface and uh, post-op yeah. period you should... Uh, 
continue with the, the adjustable uh, splint. Yes. Gradual yes. Uh, extraction. Yes. Yes. This is all is in Indian uh, Journal of Surgery, Indian yes. Journal of Plastic Surgery. You can see references in it yes. about yes. the adjustable splint. Yes. The simple, straightforward fixed uh, splint yes. does not give you that advantage. Custom made uh, aeroplane splint with the adjustable screws uh, they, that can be uh, traction can be applied. Yes, yes. You would have seen in your cleft palate gag, there is a ratchet and then it gets locked at various other positions. This kind of a ratchet between the two limbs of the splint will permit you to keep on stretching it. Every day you can stretch a little bit so that you get a good axillary release for you to go to the next step. We used it uh, in two cases, sir. Uh, this adjustable splint in post-operative. Okay. So, so we have to stop uh, uh, if there after releasing the contracture. If there is a muscle tightening, uh, we have to resurface and uh, go ahead uh, with the splinting, adjustable splinting, and uh, get the abduction. So that uh, point has to be taken. Oh, okay. 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 Yes, sir. There, there is oh. unlikely was well, something which you will have to know is he need not get scared about axillary contracture. It is unlikely for you to cut the axillary arteries vein. Both are impossible because these are all skin fold problem. The axilla is deep. Often, not often, almost 90% of the cases you will find some useful skin with uh, foul smelling because of the long-standing discharge. Everything is there, so you will be able to release both the folds simultaneously you will be able to get a good release and uh, surface it, splint it, stretch it. Maybe you may need a, at least three to six months to go to the elbow and uh, from elbow to wrist will take another one or six months. Okay. Uh Dr. Sandeep, would you like to contribute anything? Uh, no, Madhavi, Madhavi, you have done a good job. You have actually uh, dealt with the case nicely. Uh, I don't have anything further to ask you right now. Okay. 